Hello everyone, welcome to whatculture.com. That was way too serious, it's not how I want to start this. Hello everyone, my name is Jules, welcome to whatculture.com. And if you have been watching my videos over the last couple of years since I've been at this channel, you'll know one thing. As I've risen through basically being a peon, to a stooge, to, well, cock of the walk, that I am incredibly bold. No, it's not that one. It is the fact that I'm very angry about certain things. And in fact, so angry that my bosses actually gave me my own show over on the gaming channel, which is called These Things Suck. And it's not a list. It's never a list on that format, okay? It's basically where I take a stab at things that annoy me about the gaming industry, about mechanics, levels, video game bosses, and so they thought, why not shorten his life even further than by giving him a chance to spread his absolute hot piping piss on the main channel? So here I am. And fittingly enough, it seems, for me to be jumping ship over to this channel to do what I do worst, they've given me these spin-off movies suck. Ha 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 ha. So let's see what we got, shall we? But this is the thing, if you are new to this series, then there's a few things that you need to get straight. I'm not my usual charming, bubbly self. I am in angry mode for the sake of it. It is very tongue in cheek, so don't get all pissy in the comments. And finally, this little fella right here, well, his name is Jeremy, and he only pops out when I'm getting really, really spicy. So what is a spin-off movie? Well, to put it plainly, you remember that character that you absolutely grew to love across two hours of cinematic joy? Well, it's not about him, it's about his scenery chewing c**t of a mate who literally couldn't even hold a candle to the shining beacon that were the main cast. They've got a movie, and now I'm here to go through the worst of them. So with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these spin-off movies absolutely suck. We begin, as we should, with an origin story, that of fan favourite and vascular magazine monthly subscriber Huge Jacked Man, aka Wolverine. Now here's the thing, I, along with so many other ex-fans, was so ready for an origin story detailing the slashing and stabby little honey badger that is the Wolverine, but when they finally gave us X-Men Origins Wolverine, <laughs> I wish I had died. This is quite possibly the worst X-Men film ever made, and I do not say that lightly because Dark Phoenix and Last Stand also bloody exist. But you know what, things start out well though, because the film has without question one of the best opening sequences in any superhero movie. Hell, the time-leaping montage is one of the best openings of any film. But the problem is, is that it started the film out sprinting, but tied its shoes together with the plot, the characters, the terrible CGI, and the cringeworthy dialogue. And that meant that we were left sprawling, watching a potential fountain of wonder and amazement turn into a leaky pipe full of piss and shit. And it comes down to things like the pacing of this film, which feels like it was just completely thrown together, like somebody took a bucket or a salt shaker and was just like, ksh, ksh, ksh. Uh, those are our plot points, that'll do. I mean, you've got all of the cliches that are terrible as well, like walking away from explosions, deus ex machina plot devices, and contrived deaths right before immediate changes that would have made those deaths completely pointless. You know what I'm talking about as well. I'm just going to skip the bit that I've already written and jump to the bit that actually genuinely annoys me. They've got a character who literally is amazing with sniper rifles and guns, right? They kill him off, and then the scene later, the bad guys develop a gun or a bullet that can actually kill Wolverine. Oh, isn't it convenient that the one person who would have been amazing could have shot him from about a mile away and not had any problems whatsoever is dead, meaning that you have to come up with a bullshit reason to get in his face where he's going to kick your ass. I hate this film so much. And the dialogue, oh my god, the cliché dialogue. It sounds like it was written with the same mentality as how Will I Am named himself, which is actually fitting because he is bafflingly in this film as John Wraith, and he's only memorable for wearing a cowboy hat. And then there was the absolute butchering of fan favourites. I mean, Deadpool and Gambit. I'll detail them both separately. Like, Deadpool, he's the merc with a mouth, so what do you do? You make him a merc with all of the superpowers and no mouth? What were you smoking? I do not understand why they thought that that would be a good idea. Hey, this is the thing that everyone loves. Let's just invert that. And Gambit. My god. 
after watching the 90s kids TV show, the animated one, it, he's forever going to be in my top X-Men mutants and say it with me kids of all time. But here's the problem. This is our only cinematic outing for the ladies man. And now I have to watch this if I want to get my gambit fix. And that's not good. That is no bueno, brother. In short, this was a horrible and unnecessary mutation of the X-Men franchise and was an evolutionary dead end for both fans and critics alike. So of course it got a sequel. But to be fair though, that was much better. <coughs> So here's the thing, when I saw that Pixar were going to be working on another animated project after the, well, incredible Incredibles, my hopes were soaring high. But when I found out that that project was going to be called Cars and focus on NASCAR, aka the sport that can be boiled down to turning a little bit, my enthusiasm died quicker than I likely have enraged NASCAR fans with that previous comment. It's a dumb sport, but you can like what you like. Anyway, even I have to admit, though, that Cars wasn't actually that much of a disappointment. It wasn't the greatest Disney Pixar film I'd ever seen, but it definitely wasn't the worst. It was all like, ch-ch-pow, ch ch whatever the f*** that car thing says. It definitely reeked of merchandise, but then what Disney Pixar film doesn't? What followed, though, was some less than average sequels, and thankfully all does seem to be quiet on that front. However, soaring silently overhead like a stealth bomber packed with pure feces was Planes, the absolute stinker of a spin-off that dropped in 2013 whose critical obliteration made the Hindenburg disaster look like pure bloody smooth sailing. Hello, Darla Dickhead. Yes, I know that joke was a little bit harsh, but so was watching this f***ing film. Bye-bye now. This disaster piece was created by a spin-off animation company called Disney Toon Studios, but held a script approved by Pixar and Disney, meaning that they gave this bird the green light and in doing so flipped another bird to the bloody audience. It is, in short, a plane wreck of a movie, with a plot that you could immediately guess just by looking at the poster alone, with voice acting more phoned in than Marlon Brando in his later years on the phone, literally phoning it in, and basically was all of these cliches that screamed that they'd come from a corporate board meeting entitled What Da Kids Think Is Cool, spelt with a K, E, W, and L bloody hell. This was an embarrassment of a film and a blatant cash grab by Disney, which thankfully crashed so hard that not even the black box survived. Although that's what I would be saying if it didn't get a goddamn sequel. Boo. Because yes, it made around four times its cost back, and so we were treated to another sequel titled Fire and Rescue. And that was horribly bland as well, and thankfully didn't do well enough at the box office for a planned third movie. Yes, that is right, a third movie was planned, which was actually going to be set in space, and you know what, finally, that actually sounds like a cool idea. But we didn't get it. God damn, I hate planes. Now, let it be known, the original Mask film, or original The Mask, if you want to get absolutely anal about it, is an absolutely brilliant cinematic gem. It is chaotic, it is frantic, it is so funny and creative, I absolutely love this. And yes, while it did tone down heavily the M-rated maturity of the source material, it was still a very fine adaptation because of its confidence. And that was really all down to one person. The makeup team. No, I, it's obviously Jim Carrey, although the makeup team definitely deserve a massive shout out for this. They were fantastic in doing that. But Jim Carrey, his sense of energy and just insanity carry across so well for the character or characters that he's playing in this film. His under the skin mania is what drives this piece. His comic timing is excellent. His face, it's rubberiest that it's ever been. And his delivery was mm, so on point that you could cut yourself on it. And so, it pains me to tell you that The Son of the Mask is a film that exists. No, don't worry, I will go on, I just need a moment. It is a film that makes my skin almost invert itself thanks to how cringy it is, but it also at the same time nearly terrifies me to death with its shoddy effects. 
So as you might expect from a crappy spin-off movie, none of the original cast were back, of course the budgets were cut in half, and yes, the effects, as I've just mentioned, were pure shod e. And that's to say nothing of the terrifying visual that this film gives us of Tim, this film's hero, having sex with his wife with the mask on. The amount of freaky sh** that must have happened that night would have been off the scale. And so this charming cinematic moment gave us this, a baby with all the powers of the mask. And I know what you're thinking to yourself. You're asking, Jules, you absolute lovely man with the head of a light bulb and no beard. Where's your beard gone? Why are you wearing a zip up indoors? It's because I shaved because the missus didn't want it tickling her face so much. Let's just say face. And also the fact that I've got wearing a zipper because it's cold in here. Getting back to the question you're asking, should they have mixed babies in CGI? No, because we've seen what Twilight did to that freak. What was going on with that? Jesus. So of course here, with less budget and less creative skill than that, of course it looks terrifying. Which is why I've created a little game show slide panel thing for you right now, which is called, and the editor's probably gonna have to put something up now, which is just is like, what the f is that? And what we're gonna do is just take random stills from this film, and I'm just gonna say, what the f is that over it over and over again? What a great game. What the f is that? 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 And what the f is that? So yes, this was an absolute disappointment across the board, but wait, there's a little caveat here because unfortunately, on this first episode, it is not the only Jim Carrey adjacent project that is in the firing line because ladies and gents, drum roll please, here we go. It is time to talk about Ace Ventura Jr. Pet Detective. Oh yes, it exists, and it's as dire as you thought it would be. The opening 20 or so minutes of this flick are enough to make you wretch, as the movie cuts so many times, tries so many horribly dated transitions, and fails so hard to be even remotely funny. It is bleeding out before anything of note actually happens. But Jules, I hear you cry yet again. This is a kid's film, cut it some slack. No, definitely not. I'm not gonna be cutting this film any slack because of the fact that yes, kid's films should have a simpler plot line and characters that are maybe a little bit sillier because they are a younger audience. That I will accept. But this, I would not accept shoveling this amount of crap down the throats of kids watching this. This is, this is bordering on child abuse. It is a film that is effectively trying to do that whole jangling the keys in front of the baby to keep it occupied, just loud noises and sounds. But here, the keys, each individual one, has got hack scripts written by studio executives, and the baby is dead. So, Ace here is played by Josh Flitter, and he is just horribly unlikable. His mannerisms are more grating than listening to Gilbert Gottfried being fed through a grater. His dialogue is lifted straight from the previous films, which makes it feel so apparent, like you're watching a pale imitation at best. And the plot is so thin on the ground that the film has to bloat itself in other areas like chases and slapstick scenes, and it becomes clear that there is absolutely no meat on the bones at all. And the reason why slapstick and elongated action sequences worked quite well in the original two films is because Jim Carrey was at the wheel. The man is a tour de force, lightning in a bottle, smashed on the ground that becomes a Tasmanian devil of energy. He is one of a kind, and he carried that because it was his intention, his pure intent, to make you laugh. What, by whatever means, if you weren't laughing, in his mind you were doing something wrong, and he would go further and further and further and push it until you could do nothing other than laugh at the ridiculousness you were witnessing. Here though, it makes me want to punch a child. Because when you're superimposing this over a child actor who is A, not at his peak, and that is just putting it lightly, and B, never going to have the charisma to pull this off, it is like watching old Yeller's final scenes and that we just want to put the poor thing out of its misery. And you know what? They do the goddamn dirty with Ace in this film as well. He's not shown at all in this film, but they, they mention him. They mention that the last time that Ace Ventura Sr. was ever seen was going to rescue some animals and flying a plane over the Bermuda Triangle. Meaning that this film is not an origin story. This is not the story of Ace Ventura growing up to be a character that we love and therefore we could just ignore that it ever exists. This is the cap off of a trilogy of films with him dead at 
the end. Why? Why do this to the things I love? So yeah, what we're left with is a film that is less pet detective and more absolute dog dick. There we go. We've got time for one more? Fantastic. Cool. Minions. F*** this film. I've had more fun watching relatives be taken off of life support. There we go. Quick fire round for you there. Anyway, that was the first episode of These Things Suck Film Edition. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends. At least got a few laughs. Remember, it is tongue in cheek. I'm a nice guy, really. I'm a nice guy. I don't try and do this to wind people up. It's just a bit of fun. Anyway, I hope that you are doing well, all things considered. As you can see here, I'm in the isolation station here in Wales. Things are a little bit tense, to say the least, at the moment. But I hope that you are treating yourself fairly, both physically and mentally, because you you know what, my friend? You are an absolute ledge who deserves love, happiness, and success. Do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. I'm using my anger now, but for positivity. Whoa! I don't know what happened there. My camera just cut out. You can follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter.com. And as always, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!